A whooping crane chick learns to feed, encouraged by the gestures and calls of its human foster parents. In 1945, only 16 whooping cranes existed. Today, there are 300, thanks to captive breeding and the patient rearing of chicks by hand. And this is surely one of the most extraordinary hand-rearing devices yet invented. A hooping grain adult hand glove puppet with the trigger inside so that I can operate the beak. I'm speaking quietly because behind each one of these doors there is a hooping grain chick. And it's very important that they don't get used to the sound of human voices at this early stage in their lives. It's even more important, of course, that they don't see human beings, which is why they're fed with this glove puppet. Here at the International Crane Foundation in Wisconsin, they believe that were the chicks to be fed by humans directly and visibly, they would risk becoming humanized so that when they became adult, they wouldn't be able to breed with their own kind. As they grow, the hoopers lose all their brown plumage and replace it with white feathers. They must now learn how to use them in flight. And once again, they have to be shown the sort of thing they must do. Away to the west in Idaho, a farmer with a passion for cranes, Kent Clegg, has also been rearing a small group of hooper chicks. He has a mechanized way of persuading his little flock to fly. He's reared them in a quite different way, initially in small groups which he believes will avoid humanizing problems. He then taught them to follow him. Now he's put them together with the young of a commoner, smaller species, sandhill cranes. They are the all brown ones. So the little mixed flock has become confident in the air. There's one further problem. Hooping cranes are migratory. In the past, some used to overwinter in the United States, but many in the autumn would fly south to New Mexico. If these birds were to remain free, they might try to do the same thing. But how would they know which way to go without their parents to guide them? And how would they find somewhere safe to feed when they got there? Well, that problem is being tackled too. Kent Clegg is planning to lead them there himself 
in his microlight.